my friends, I have one hell of a giveaway for you today. What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Pam, and today we are gonna talk about some of my plants that do really well under grow lights, specifically my LED grow lights from Hidden Harvest. If you remember, Brad from Hidden Harvest so kindly sent me three of his square panel lights to try out and use with my plants. He expected nothing in return, but I decided to unbox them on camera, and I talk about them all the time because I genuinely love these lights. And today, I'm gonna give you guys a chance to love them too. Three chances, actually. You heard me, Brad has been incredibly generous again and has offered to give me three lights to give away to you guys. So come with me, I'm gonna show you how the lights are treating some of my house plants. I'm gonna tell you about ones that I've found that do well under lights, ones that don't do as well under lights, and I will give you a little tour of the lights themselves so you can see what it is that you're entering to win. And I'll put all the details of the contest at the end of the video. So here they are. This is the 36 watt micro mole grow panel from Hidden Harvest Grow Lights. It's a full spectrum daylight white grow light, which means it's going to be a really pleasant, warm white light. It's not that blinding harsh light. It's closer to actual noontime, full spectrum daylight. So that's what we're working with over here. I'm not a fan of those purple grow lights. And from what I hear, they are not so great for the plants as they seem anyway. Moving on. So we're gonna take a little tour on this shelf and I'm gonna show you what I have on the uppermost shelf first, which are the plants that can really take um, more high intensity light from these grow panels. So don't mind the random bean plants. Those are for a science experiment for my son at school. Um, so the first ones I will show you are these beautiful variegated string of hearts. Now I was so fortunate as to get one little strand of this accidentally attached to a regular string of hearts. And uh, I have since then managed to make a whole lot more of it. So I actually took the regular plant and added some vine clippings. I just used um, these little metal pins that are meant to block knitting um, and to dry like knitted fabrics. I use those to hold the little tubers down into the soil. I'm just trying to fill in the top of the pot more, but you can see that blush of pink and that's because they're getting the equivalent of basically full sun right where they are under these lights and they're very happy since I moved them under there. I think that the success of these lights are really shown by these two succulents here. This is my string of dolphins and my string of bananas. And these things were dead. They were dying. They were suffering from the winter, from the cold. They were miserable. And you can see all of the new growth. They had been under these lights for about um, probably five or six weeks at this point. And you can see all of the new growth that has come in it's like it's the middle of summer they're just going crazy and i'm just so relieved because i thought that these things were done for um so super happy about that and i have these probably about six inches under these grow panels maybe a little bit more you can see the new growth over here on the string of bananas yeah, they might be about eight inches they're whatever size that pot is <laughs> on the ikea shelf I'm not very good with visual measurements, I apologize. But yeah, so you can see that these are doing really well. And for succulents, to me, that means that this upper shelf, where the lights are, this is kind of like a full sun situation right here. These Hoya Curtisii cuttings were more plants that were just croaking from the winter. I couldn't figure it out. You know, they were cutting, so that was kind of a rough time for them to transition. But as soon as I stuck them under the lights and I have them sort of in the middle of the two lights, so they're not really like taking the brunt of the light. I actually have that part of the shelf sort of clear so that that center light kind of comes through the glass to the shelf below. So this guy's right in the middle of the two, getting a nice mix of that edge light. And it seems to be really happy because the leaves, which were once very papery and flimsy, are now nice and taut. It's doing really well. And, um, you know, you can see there's a crispy end there, but everything has stopped dying. So I'm very excited about that. And I'm hoping that it will start growing soon, which will really be like the final pat on my back that I saved her. 
So you may recognize these little mixed pots with the jade from my tiny hands repotting video. Um, ironically, my cat knocked them onto the ground again, so um, they're not doing so great. But you can see the new growth on them, again, since I put them under the light, since I had this idea to put succulents on the top shelf, um, it is nice and plump and it's doing really well because we have these beautiful lights just fire and sun power at them and I'm just so pumped. So you can see I have a string of bananas over here in this mix pot and I am not sure if that one's gonna make it. Um, that one's still looking pretty rough. That is about what the other one looked like beforehand. So, But you can actually see that the jade is starting to grow again. It is seeming to like the light under here and you know my other little mix pot of succulents there is pretty happy except for that banana. So. I'm feeling pretty good. We have about a 90% success rate with saving my succulents from the grips of winter by putting them really close to my hidden harvest panels. So very exciting. There actually is some very, very tiny new growth on that string of bananas. So I guess I won't give up yet. So this is a new addition to this part of the shelf. I have it mostly just catching the window light off to the side, but there's that Cebu blue cutting and down under there below it one floor is my new philodendron brandy from Cody over at the crazy plant man. So love that plant. So it is just hanging out there, catching that second shelf light with a little mix of nice Eastern window light. So it seems pretty happy there right now, keeping an eye on it. And back there is a little bonsai that I picked up from Home Depot last year. I believe that is a ginseng um, bonsai and it's doing great over there. That thing's been really happy wherever I've put it for the most part, but um, I've noticed that it seems to be kind of liking where it's at right there. So I'm just leaving it where it is for now. You can see a little bit of new growth coming in right there, uh, as well as a dead jade leaf from the top floor. I love this plant because it looks like a lounging, long-armed naked lady. And living its best life over here as well on the second shelf is my night blooming Sirius, which you can see is exceeding the height limit of its shelf at the moment. So it, uh, might be telling me something there, so I need to move that one up. General lover of grow lights and happy wherever it lives is this cute little Peperomia Piccolobanda, and it has put out about 10,000 leaves since I got it and put it over here. And it's getting pretty direct shot of that overhead grow panel, but it is, you know, coming down through the glass shelf. So it's not getting hit too hard, but as you can see, uh, it's uh, clearly getting just the right amount of light because it couldn't be happier. I love that plant, it's so adorable. Don't mind my unsightly cords in the back, we're working on that. And this is my lace flower propagation, also extremely happy where it is on the second shelf. It's looking really healthy, really happy with some new growth coming. And over here is my Peperomia Meridiana from that ill-fated Josh's Frogs unboxing. Um, so I did end up lopping the top off right here and I'm propagating that in another vessel. And uh, since I've videoed this particular clip, there is new growth coming in quite a bit on the top. So I'm pretty glad I did that. I was a little nervous, but I wanted to try and see if I could fill the pot in a little bit. Um, so you can see there's some new growth coming in on the bottom since I put it here. And again, this is on the second shelf. It's catching that, uh, you know, probably about, it's probably like two feet down, I think from the actual light. I should probably have measured this stuff. I'll uh, put some measurements actually on the screen for these so that you don't have to listen to me guess anymore after this. And here is one of my pride and joys. This is my beautiful, beautiful coleus that I got from Steve's Leaves. It is the Othello variety and as you know about coleus, they need full sun to be really happy. And this is actually on that second shelf. There's not a lot of things obstructing the beam of light, but there is, you know, some plant leaves here and there. So it's actually really happy where it is. So coleus is a shade plant outside and kind of a full sun plant inside, but you also can't have it in direct sun because they get spider mites. It is a very difficult balance. So 
this being happy right here makes me think that this is you know just some good ass light right here and right over here i have my syngonium rei this is the only syngonium my own actually it's the only one i've ever really been into i love it so much this is a commonly known as the velvet leaf syngonium i believe and this thing is loving life where it is right now because it was not super happy in my east facing window i don't know if it was a little too cool over there or if it was too much sun or what was going on but it wasn't happy and then i put it here on that second shelf there is nothing obstructing the light from the upper shelf so it's getting you know a good cover of that light and it's so happy so i'm not moving it i'm not even going to breathe near it same goes for this begonia so this is that wonderful begonia cutting that i got from dirty roots on instagram um, and i love this baby so you can see it's filled in very nicely from the little root rhizome that she sent me and it's love and life right here on the second shelf so it's gonna stay right where it is this is a black mamba begonia by the way i forgot to say that and it also catches just a little bit of light over there from that east facing window so it's a nice little supplement light as well same for this peperomia hope back here this guy has just been chilling on this shelf pretty much since i got the shelf so i just really didn't move it and just adding the light into the shelf has just helped it grow quite a little bit over the last few months you can see there's a good amount of new growth coming in some new vines i get a lot of questions about how to make these bushier and i can tell you that i did clip some vines root them and then put them back into the pot since i got this so that is one way that you can um, you know manage it they do take a little bit to root but um, once they get in there they're okay so now I'm going to take you down to the third floor, the third shelf. So you can see that I actually moved that little clip on LED light that I got from Amazon that I unboxed. I will leave a link down below if you didn't see that video. This is just a cheaper alternative to some LED lights. And I can tell you that these don't cover a lot and they're not amazing, but they have worked out perfectly for this sort of, you know, medium to low light third shelf that I have going on here with the windows on either side and this little clip on light. It's just enough so that I can have these plants on this shelf. They don't have to be blocking my window and I'm getting quite a bit of new growth on these two philodendrons. I have a Prince of Orange and a Moonlight right there. So they are super happy. These are Josh's Frogs plants from way back. So they are finally putting in quite a bit of work doing some excellent growing for me and um, these little clip-on lights have definitely helped in that department especially over winter i have this beautiful peperomia right here this guy actually had some i think i overwatered it i lost a few of the newer growth leaves recently and um, i'm not sure what happened because that's never really happened with that plant before so i just sort of backed off the watering and as you can see it's recovering nicely so i think that's what happened i think i just overwatered it very easy to do in the winter time especially with peperomias even when you have a lot of them even when you know what you're doing so don't beat yourself up if it happens. This is my giving myself an excuse. Okay, so we have another peperomia here because I am a peperomia addict. And uh, right here is the, uh, what is this one called? Ginny? It's peperomia Jimmy. Ginny. Ginny? G-I-N-N-Y. Ginny. I can't talk. So this is a peperomia Ginny. And uh, I got this one from the plant hall. And my friend Kristen actually sent this to me as a surprise. It is just lovely look at that gorgeous and it is quite happy under the lights um, it has actually managed to survive with some all white leaves for quite some time and i think it's because they're getting such a gentle light from the led like i said um peperomias just love grow lights look at that leaf gorge and back here is the little spider plant baby, the all green spider plant that my aunt sent me, um, which now that I'm recording this voiceover, I'm realizing I haven't checked on that in some time and you can't really see it. So uh, mental note, I'm going to go check on that. <laughs> here is my Diffenbachia reflector. So this is, oh, is it a reflector? Yeah, Diffenbachia reflector, I believe is what is, this one's called. So this guy is beautiful and it's putting out some new growth right now. It has been very happy under these little clip-on lights. This one was one that I found 
either dried out or just got a little too crispy under the um, warmer kind of like light bulb grow lights. So it's definitely been much happier under these LEDs. They tend to run a lot cooler. So I've noticed it's sort of temperature sensitive. Just a tip for y'all. I have a Pilea Moon Valley back there. Um, not my favorite plant, but it's all right. It gets these really cool little flowers in it, but I feel like it spends a lot of time being sort of um, unattractive, but I don't hate it. It's just not my favorite, you know? But it is, it's, it's, it seems to be getting quite a bit of light because I think this is what it does when it feels like it has too much light. So um, I don't know if the LED light is almost too much for it where it is. I'm gonna have to mess with that one. If you know anything about that, let me know down in the comments. And here is my pitiful disgrace. <laughs> of Apilia peppermiotis. Um, the babies are always very happy, but the mama looks very much like she has had a lot of babies. So, you know, can relate to that plant. Here is a Peperomia silver ripple, and uh, that guy, it's been through some times. Uh, it was a very lush and bushy plant last year. Uh, the fall came around, the winter hit, and it threw all of its leaves on the floor, and then grew all of these back. So, um, I, it's, I guess it's fine now. It definitely enjoys the LED lighting. So I'm just gonna leave it there and I'm gonna try not to look at it too much uh, lest it decide to throw another tantrum. So there you have it. Here is uh, most of the rundown of my Hidden Harvest light shelves, the floor one, floor two, and then the supplemental lighting on the third floor of this shelf. So that's how I'm working grow lights in this area of my house. So if you've been watching my channel for a little while, you know that the first grow lights that I started out with were just an inexpensive setup right here. These are Sunblaster CFL self-ballasted light bulbs that I have inside of just regular clip-on shop lights. I guess these are difficult to get outside of the United States, but if you're in the US, they should be, you know, eight to $10 to get these. The light bulbs themselves are around $8. And as you can see, this is adding some supplemental light to a little corner that is next to my eastern window. So because it's in the corner, it's too dark to keep plants without any kind of supplemental lighting. But in the summer, it's, it's okay over there, you know? So I just add this little light bulb pop on the upper shelf of my little tea cart here that I have sort of placed into the alcove. We're just piling stuff, you know, just piles of plants. That's how we roll, so. You can see my lovely Zero Graphica air plant right there. I really love that thing. It's just so gorgeous. And I have a Sissus uh, discolor in a bag right there where uh, I've moved it to the magic cookie jar since then, but um, that was sort of an emergency measure as it threw its last Bible leaf on the ground. And it is making little nubs again. So we're holding out hope folks, you know. We're uh, doing some shoddy camera work here. I apologize. But uh, yeah, here's me proving that I didn't kill it yet. So uh, yeah, don't stop watching my channel. I'm not a plant murderer most of the time. Okay. So this part of the shelf over here sort of catches most of the window light. And uh, yet <laughs> my boyfriend just texted me that he's waiting for me to get him and uh, he has the car. Uh, this is why we're together, folks. Okay, so you can see all of these plants right here. They catch a lot of window light. So for them, the grow light's not really coming into play here, but they are getting that nice blast of eastern, almost southern light. And uh, yeah, so you can see that even my alocasia is happy in the middle of the winter. Only that one, though. The other one, not so much. <laughs> I even got a little orchid tucked over here and it did look dark on camera, but it actually gets a good amount of that window light right there. So pretty cool that grow lights can help you fill in some corners. And what I'm showing you right here is where the grow light I have above my seedlings was until about a week and a half before I filmed this video. And you can see the size of the leaves that my Monstera put out over winter with that hidden harvest panel over its head. Look at the size of those things. I mean, for a house plant and a plant that I just bought, you know, from Stop and Shop last year, these leaves are monstrous. And this definitely was from having that 
hidden harvest panel up above where I was just showing you. Um, I thought I had a clip of it, but I think I deleted it to make space on my phone, but yeah. You'll just have to trust me. So these were all under the hidden harvest light, as well as having this west facing window. So no real direct sun at all, um, but just a lot of environmental light. With the help of this lovely panel right here, which is now above my seedlings. So you can see these lights also work as a seed light and you can have them up a little bit higher than you can with the T5 lights that so you would only be able to have a few inches above your seed tray to start out. So these actually can hang a little higher and as you can see, the seedlings are not leggy, they're very happy and uh, yeah, those popped up in a couple of days under this panel. So very versatile lights, very excited very excited to give them away. And I'm sorry if you're watching this after the giveaway, um, but if you wanna to subscribe to Brad's channel over on his YouTube, which is Hidden Harvest Grow Lights, he does giveaways all the time. So definitely follow him and you will have some more chances or you can just, you know, take your girl's word and pick one of these lights up for yourself and let me know what you think. And this is one more peek at just using one of those little sun blaster clamp lights as a helper light over here in my propagation area. I would like to eventually mount one of my hidden harvest panels under this cabinet for this little area. I just haven't gotten around to that yet. So for right now, we're just using the clamp light. So you can see all of my beloved little cuttings and clippings and things that are recovering from spider mites and whatnot. This actually regrew. It died completely and then started growing shoots again. So that was that was a triumphant moment. But yeah, this is where I keep all of my little cuttings and I just use that little accent light to fill in what is otherwise a dark corner. So you can see all of these are doing really well and I've been using that light in this corner for I would say about two months now. So, so far so good. So this was a requested video. So I hope that you guys found this helpful, that it gave you some ideas what you can do with all different kinds of grow lights to help you grow plants indoors in maybe areas that have not been blessed by natural light. So let's get into the giveaway details and uh, wrap this video up. Okay, so let's talk about how you enter. So first of all, you need to be subscribed to both my channel and Brad's channel. I will leave his information in the description box below as well as pin it to the first comment along with the rules. We're gonna keep this to US residents only. I am not the one paying the shipping for this, so I'm going to uh, keep it simple for Brad. He was very generous to donate these lights, so I don't wanna add the hassle of international shipping on top of that. I'm still planning my next big subscriber milestone giveaway and that one I'm going to make sure has an international prize, at least for the EU, assuming it still exists. All that's left to do is leave a comment down below. You're going to hashtag hidden harvest in your comments. If you don't put the hashtag in, you will not be entered. So don't forget. This helps me differentiate between comments and please only leave one comment. The random comment generator that I use to pick the winner eliminates duplicates anyway, so there's no point in entering more than once. And there's gonna be three winners for this contest because Brad is ridiculously generous. So you have three chances to win, get excited. Brad will be shipping the winners their lights, so you will need to give him your mailing address or you can give it to me and I will get it to him. You wanna make sure that you will be able to be home or at least be around or have someone be around to grab these lights off the porch because if it gets pinched, that's the only one you're gonna get. So make sure that you are able to get your mail in a safe place. So best of luck to everybody. Thank you so much, Brad and Hidden Harvest Grow Lights for this incredibly generous donation. I am incredibly excited for you guys to try these lights and Brad is even sending me one of his new models of lights to try out, so I will be able to give you guys a ton of feedback on that light as well. So for all those people who grow very tall plants, thanks so much for watching, best of luck, and I will see you in the next one.